What's up, Mortgage Coach community? Dave Savage coming to you live. Uh, every Friday, we do this mastermind. Uh, we don't have my wingman, Todd Bookspan, today. It's just me. Um, but it's not just me. I've got Denise Donahue with me. What's up, Denise? Hey, guys. What's going on? So, guys, this is our Friday call where we want to make this as interactive as possible. Denise and I have a structured conversation that we're going to go through, like how to become a black belt. And while, even if you've heard me go through it, it's going to be Denise and I going through it together. And then black belt in advice, first half, and then black belt in marketing as an advisor. Uh, second half of the call with the nerd. Check out Denise's glasses. Oh, yes. The, the mortgage nerd. So, Denise, let's start with just like, how's it going? Did I lose you? I, I can hear you. We, I did interrupt her. We had a little internet thing. I can hear yeah. you. But how, 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 how has this year been for you? It's been great. It's, um, it's definitely been one of our record breaking years. And we've made, we did make quite a bit of changes at the start of the year because last fall, you know, those rates went up and things got slow. And so it caused me to analyze the process, analyze our team positions. We made big changes at the beginning of the year and it's paid off. So I'm, I'm really excited about that. Cool. And what are you going to close for the year? And what did you do last month? Uh, let's see. At the end of October, we were just over 75 million, and I think around 257 families helped. So I'm sure by the end of the year, we'll end up around, gosh, maybe 90. We've got another That's 10 huge. in the pipeline for November, and yeah. That's huge. And uh, what about this month? How many loans do you think could be closing as we uh, close out November of 2019? We're on track to do 36 families this month that will help. And um, we, of course, with this decrease in the rates, we've had more refis than we did in the last few years. But yeah, I think we're going to end with 36 families. So it's, we're excited about that. You know, I've, I've had a lot of people tell me they're, they're having a little bit of a challenge getting people off the fence in today's market. You know, are you seeing that at all where there's just fence sitting starting to happen or? Is that, a, is that a challenge at all for you right now? I think it's definitely something that's psychologically in the back of a lot of people's minds. But when I hear that, I've trained a lot of my real estate partners, and that's probably why they use me today is with the tools that we have. If somebody's renting right now or if somebody has a house that they need to sell because their family's growing or getting smaller, that's when I'll typically run an analysis for them. And I find that if you show them the numbers – and then you show that you can get a really good deal on a home that you purchase in the fall because there's less buyer demand in the fall. Maybe convince them to rent their current house out versus sell it because if you follow me, I'm a big fan of rental properties and that being in your portfolio. But if I do find that fear, oftentimes it's just showing them the numbers, um, which we can go into later it, to show them why financially – waiting just one day could cost them money. In fact, it will, because rates could go up and appreciation goes up. And so every day you wait essentially could cost you money. So for anybody who is having challenges with urgency, catch that. She's showing them the numbers. Did you catch, she's showing them the cost of waiting a day could make a difference. Missing this house that you're making an offer could make a difference. So let's um, pull up some slides. Guys, if you have questions along the way, put those in chat of either the Facebook group or the, um, or Zoom. So I have been doing this keynote on becoming a black belt in mortgage advice. Now, I, I'm gonna do this with Denise. And so it's gonna be a collaboration between her and I. Uh, to me, what I'm most excited about, most proud of you for is the, the 1,284 total cost analysis. I mean, production's awesome. But uh, just, just so you know, you are in mortgage coach land, you're a grandmaster. Like black belt is 300 TCAs, over 1,000 is grandmaster. So you're, you're killing it and congrats on that. Um, awesome. So, so when we came up with this black belt, I've interviewed just countless loan officers with a lot of intention around what is a black belt, what is an orange belt. Uh, and, and I guess the point I wanna make for y'all 
is when we create this content, it's all about helping you grow your advice, how you use technology, and how you show up as a leader to both your clients, borrowers, realtors, and, and just your team. You know, how do you scale? Uh, when Denise and I were doing our prep, she was saying that uh, she's put a lot of focus on just growing her team from a leadership perspective. So, so let's, the first concept I want to cover when it comes to being a mortgage coach black belt is, is the concept of, are you a challenger sales rep? And I have talked about this multiple times from stage and in calls. If, you, if you've read the book, I would love to know. Just let me know in chat down below. Uh, I just want to get a feel for how many people have read this book or you've heard me talk about this. Uh, Denise, you, you told me before we started, you have not read it, right? Right, I have not. So let me walk you through this. So here's some cliff notes. It's, it's a good to great on salespeople. And Microsoft participated, ADP participated. Some of the biggest uh, sales organizations in the world participated and they analyzed the top 10% performers. So think about like this. When they analyzed the top 10% performers, some of them were hard workers and that was their superpower. Some of them were relationship reps, that was their superpower. Some of them were the problem solver. Some of them were the lone wolf. And then you had the challenger sales rep. Now, who do you think came in number one? Challenger sales rep. I'm not going to let you guess on that. They came in one, but Denise, here's my question to you. Who came in second and who came in last in terms of the most successful salespeople in America in multiple industries? These are the profiles. Challenger rep was number one. Who came in second? Who came in last? I'd say second is relationship builder. And who came in last is the lone wolf. So that, that, I, I've, I've talked about this from stage. By the way, that's what I would have guessed before reading the book. Um, but here's, here's the reality. Uh, and here's the study. The lone wolf came in second. And here, here was the breakdown on it. Like the lone wolf is successful, but you can't scale a team. You can't scale a sales process with the lone wolf. You know, they have a very unique loner way of doing things. Um, dead last was the relationship rep. And, wow. and people are, are like, what? Like, like, I remember when I read the book, I was kind of like, I'm skeptical. Like, I'm not buying it. And, and so then, but, but when you walk through the framework, it will all make sense to you. So here's the framework of the best of the best. Number one, they tailor. They, per, they ask great questions and they personalize. Uh, they, they teach, you know, that's how they create value. And this is where the relationship rep gets lost is the challenger rep controls. You know, they are controlling, they're leading, they're driving, and all of this is wrapped in constructive tension. And that's where, you know, the most successful people, you know, they, they go towards the, the, the challenge constructively. Whereas the relationship builders, you know, yes, yes to everything, avoids the constructive tension and is, is too much of a people pleaser. So that's, that's the framework. Any comments? Do you buy it now after seeing that? It blows my mind that when you articulate it the way that you did, probably after reading the book, it actually totally makes sense. And it just kind of reminds me of, it reminds me of Phil Jackson and they talk about how great of a coach that he is, which is kind of along the same lines of, you know, you've got to have, even if you have an all-star team, there's a lot of egos on that team, like the Scotty Pippins and Dennis Rodmans and Michael Jordans. And, and so when you talk about the constructive tension, it's like, uh, it just makes sense to me that to scale and all of that stuff, you do have to wrap that all in one pretty, pretty bow, but teaching for value, a hundred percent tailored for personalization. I think any top producer that you've interviewed, um, that's what they do control for influence. I think there's a delicate balance between being controlling and not being able to delegate. And so I, sometimes I think that's what prevents loan officers of going to that next level is because there has to be a point where you have enough control in your system and process, but you can delegate that to your next team member as long as it's being macro managed to a degree. So, yeah, I mean, I love, I love the visual of this. Yeah. So, and I'm going to break it down for the mortgage pro and for the mortgage coach and drive it into like being a black belt. So like here is the target with every realtor, with every borrower to teach them something that hadn't been considered. 
And I, I would just elevate that, guys. Is we not, can't, we not only want to teach them something they hadn't considered, we want to teach them something they'll always remember, you know, and, and call this a star moment. And, and here's the other thing that I think as a mortgage industry, we need to quit competing with ourselves and we need to start competing with every member of the wealth team. So like as a mortgage professional, you want to deliver a better experience, something they'll always remember beyond any financial planner they've ever met, beyond any CPA they've ever met, beyond any life insurance person they've ever met, beyond any realtor they've ever met. Like, like think of every member of the cap, every cap, every member of the wealth team, and you want to crush them. You want to, and I mean that like in a positive sense, you want to, you want to make it so that when that family meets with you, they're like, oh my God, I learned more than I've ever learned from anybody about money, life, wealth, and home ownership. I learned more. And, and Denise, I think that's why you're so successful is I think you deliver on that. But any comments on that before I keep going? I love that. I actually wrote that down. Teach them something they'll always remember because I'm not sure if anybody's dug into, and Dave, you might have, the psychology around when you teach somebody something that they didn't know, like why does that, why does that make that person feel so special or, or that you care versus, um, you know, another tactic or whatnot. But I do think that in a lot of my strategies, um, you, you know, like what we talked about, of do you put five, how do you answer the question when a client asks you, should I put 5% down or 10% down? You know, is the answer just, oh, well, 10% will make the monthly payment lower. Well, maybe they don't care about the monthly payment. Or maybe if you're going to teach them something that they'll always remember, maybe you run an analysis that shows them, well, if that other 5% was coming from your retirement account that's earning over 5%, let's run a net worth analysis to see what that money's staying investing and compounding, what will your net worth be at the end of seven years or 15 years versus taking that money out and putting it towards your mortgage. You show somebody that, and I think that's an example of teaching them something that nobody's ever done and you'll get responses much like the one I think I've sent to you, Dave, where I had a guy respond to me say, man, this is so great. I wish I would have used you when I bought my home in Boston. And of course I screenshot that and I send it to the agent and I'm like, woohoo, you know, but it's like when you teach somebody something that they've never learned before, they didn't hear from their parents, it just creates it. I call it a generational change. And now they can learn that and, do, and teach their children that. And how cool is that from a country and a society that we're all financially getting wiser just from sharing wisdom? I love, I love two things you just said, generational change. And I love just that simple thing, that nuance of screenshotting a positive feedback and texting or messaging that to your client. You know, in the second half of this call, we're gonna talk about how to promote and market yourself as an advisor, and that's a move. You know, it's like the little things, like people think of marketing and they think of mass email and Facebook posts. But you know what? There's personal things like a text, a mortgage coach video, a, a story. So let's, let's cover that more when we get into the marketing, but I hope you guys caught that from what Denise just said. So, so getting back on, on track and here is the framework for the mortgage coach community and the framework to be a black belt. You know, if you want to be a black belt, you need to ask questions and personalize. You need to deliver the total cost analysis for the teaching and the value. And then I didn't love the word control. And I think you felt the same way I did, Denise. It's, it's leadership, you know, it's leadership. And then I do think as a mortgage professional to really make the next 10 years, more successful than the past, it's more than constructive tension. It's transparency. It's authenticity and personal brand. It's true empathy, you know, caring. So, so, so guys, this is the, the mortgage coach framework to be a black belt mortgage professional. And I, I just think if you can deliver this framework to each and every client consistently and at scale, you are just going to kill it. Did he see any comments on this before we get into the, the, the levels of the belts? No, I think this is a perfect translation. I like it. Cool. So, so let's break it down, you know, and, and the goal is how do we, you know, 
deliver a pre-approval? How do we help a family evaluate or refinance in a way that they, they trust us, they respect us? And even if someone else has a little bit better rate, they're still going to use me. You know, they're going to work with me and it's going to be a smooth transaction. And, and here, here's a little history on how loan officers have priced loans for 40 years. I started in the 80s. I was trained by people from the 70s. And this is how I started quoting rates. You know, again, nothing wrong with a yellow sheet of paper for taking notes for yourself. Not a great use of presentations for clients. Uh, in the 80s, the LOS came out and the fee worksheet came out. And this was, this was innovative. Like this was, this was progressive in the 80s. Uh, in the 90s, no change. Uh, in the 2000s, even through the meltdown, really the only innovation we got was the product of pricing engine. So we got more efficient and effective at back-end pricing. But here's the deal, guys. In 40 years, this is how most loan officers quote rates. And, and this is what I call being a white belt mortgage professional. And it's the transactional triangle. Rate, payment, cash to close a loan. That is a transaction. That is how you get rate chopped. You know, that's how you have a value prop like every other loan officer. You know, the white belt question that every local loan officer asks is, how long do you plan to live in the home? And then you deliver the transactional triangle, white belt experience. Do you think I'm overplaying that or do you think it's really that simple? Do you align with that belt? A hundred percent. And I actually agree that that's how 95% of people still today get these, this type of information. So that's a white belt. So if that's what you're doing and that's your point of sale experience, I don't care what you say and how you do it, you're delivering a white belt experience at the, at the point of sale. So orange belt in mortgage advice is 20 TCAs and you're showing the cash over time. You know, like you're saying like, hey, I'm showing the transactional triangle. I mean, that's a requirement to do a loan, but I'm showing you like, how does that compare over five years? You know, and, and, and you're, again, you've got the transactional triangle in the mortgage coach, but then you've got the cost over time and you have the advice star all in one experience. So you, you align like that, that is, call it step one of, of being a mortgage advisor. Any comments to that, Denise? I think that that is spot on. That is usually the next level is instead of now analyzing loan terms over 30 years, because maybe the orange belt realizes that most people aren't staying in their homes for 30 years anymore. They're at least tailoring it to a more realistic timetable, like 84 months. And so it is, it definitely is better than just the triangle. Um, so I agree with it. Okay, cool deal. And, and so now let's go like blue belt. 50 total cost analysis, so 50 families you've done this for. And, and now you're starting to insert some strategies. Like, hey, what if you took this loan versus this loan and you prepaid your mortgage? How much interest could you save? How much faster could you pay off your loan? Or, oh, hey, you've got a financial planner. What if we invested that in a mortgage offset account? Like you're, you're showing cost over time. You're showing payment strategies. And, and by the way, what are you doing? You're not only delivering more value to the client. Again, you're delivering that, that point of sale experience where they're getting the triangle and they're getting the star. And, and what are you also doing? You're making every loan officer that's just doing a fee worksheet look like the villain. Like they're not being transparent. They're only showing transaction. You're showing cost over time. Any, any comments on that, Denise? And then, you know, as someone who's mentored a lot of loan officers, do you think 50 TCAs is like, okay, that's blue belt. You know, you think that's a good number and do you kind of align with the, the approach? Yes, because I think that there's somewhat a translation behind the number of TCAs and the number of units that they're doing. And so that will give you a direct correlation on um, where they're at. Because, you know, you remember when interest rates were super low, it's like the, the, the true, you know, believers in this, no matter if 30 year fixed rates are at a 3.25%, they're still utilizing a total cost analysis because we believe in the strategy. We don't believe in just the interest rate. And so um, it's, it isn't an indicative number to see what status they're at. Cool. 
And, and guys, I recommend you check out this interview. Denise, this is one I think you would dig too if you haven't watched it. Uh, Craig Strent out of Washington, D.C., who has you know, built his mortgage practice with business from financial advisors. And, and he shows a great strategy. It's a 30 versus 15. And he shows he's a you know, big believer in invest the difference because he works with financial advisors. Um, he's just a, mess, you know, a Jedi master at this strategy. So check it out, guys. So, so let's get to Purple Belt. And let's see, we got about 10 minutes before we want to transition to marketing. So guys, we're going to get to marketing in just a minute. Um, but here's a Purple Belt, 75 TCAs. So more families, more conversations, more competence. And it, by the time you're a Purple Belt, you know when and how to use video. You know when and how put a, put an audio on it. You know when and how to drive a live experience if they're not in your office. Uh, and, and, and you know this concept of omnichannel. Like if anybody's ever shopped at Nordstrom's, they're the masters of this. Like if you're online, but you wanna to go to the store, you can buy it online, get it in the store. If you're in the store and they don't have it, like within seconds, they're like, oh, you can go to this store, or I can have, is your address still such and such? And I'll have it to you. Like, it's not only omni-channel communication, email, text, social, it's omni-channel purchase, you know? And, and then of course, it's, it's options. So, so what are your thoughts on this, Denise? Did, I, did we get that right? Like, do you feel like now we're talking? You're, you're not a black belt yet, but you are a modern mortgage advisor for sure. Absolutely. I mean, the video and the live and gosh, it's like such a game changer because, you know, if you, if you deliver those, those charts, we look at those things all day long. But the touch of being able to be able to live interact with the client, have the audio, have the video, I mean, it's just, it is that next level. So, yeah, I love I don't do a single, um, I take that back. I would say 97% of my TCAs have video. Um, and the only reason why there's some without is because after we've done videos, if we're tweaking strategies, they don't need a video every single time because uh, they're now trained on how to read this up. But if it's an initial presentation, there's no way I'm not doing it without video and audio. Uh, and, and then like this is Denise at a coffee shop with a family and she's using it as a, you know, a teaching tool. It's not about the technology, it's about the strategy, and she's just using it to, to teach. So, so, so here's the deal, guys. Let's, let's fast track this. This is one of my favorite testimonials from, last, from this year, actually, where a mortgage coach delivered a TCA for an for a, for a, um, officer in the Marines, and he said, the time you spent with me explaining my mortgage coach analysis wants me to find my last two lenders I've worked with and punch them in the face. And I think, well, it made me laugh and I loved it because I'm Mr. Mortgage Coach. I think that's the experience you want to deliver. It's like such a powerful experience. They regret not doing the past two loans with you because they're getting better advice and a better experience. So, so Brown Belt is pretty simple and this is where we kind of get into marketing. It's like you do all of this, you do it over a hundred times, and, and now you're like good at delivering this black belt experience. And it's about leadership, which means helping more people in the company that you work for become black belts in mortgage advice. Like you get better when you help other people. Like when you know something so well, you can train and teach it, you get better. And then you're a marketer. You know how to take these concepts. And we're going to spend like five minutes from now, we're going to spend the rest of the call on how do we become a better marketer um, as a black belt in mortgage advice? Any comments on this, Denise? No, I think that it's good. Okay, cool. So, so if you haven't, guys, already watched the Mortgage Coach uh, interview that I did with um, Donald Miller, check it out. Uh, it's in our Facebook group. It's in our YouTube channel. Uh, I think it's a really important piece of content that will help you guys be better marketers. I'm gonna, I'm gonna skip a few slides because I really wanna focus on the marketing in just a minute with Denise, and I am gonna just go right to Black Belt. And, and here's a Black Belt, guys. Black Belt's really simple. You not only know how to do the Advice Star, you not only know how to, know how to do all the media and the omni-channel around it, 
You know how to do every different selling situation that you get into, and you've done it 300 times. And, and if you've done it over a thousand times, you're a grandmaster. I mean, you are a mortgage coach rock style, rock star. Denise, any, any thoughts or comments on this? No, this is actually spot on. And it's crazy to see all the different options that you can actually run through Mortgage Coach. Like, you know, I practice all of these, but to see them around the circle like this, it's like, wow. It is really cool that one system with a few clicks, it's not even complicated, you can actually have access to run all of these scenarios and then present it in a very digestible way for a client to understand. So it's, it's pretty cool to see it laid out like this. Yeah, oh, thanks. I hadn't actually thought of it like that. Um, marketing team, if you're listening to this, we should really think about how do we make that? Because that, that is what makes Mortgage Coach so powerful. It's like you could go from pricing alone in your product pricing engine, Optimal Blue, and with a click in the button, you can really complex, make something really simple for the consumer. So uh, that's a good point. We should do that. So one last, like, now I'm going to show a move. Like, okay, you're a black belt. You could do all these things. If you get someone into your office, that is the best way to emotionally connect, to make a friend, um, ask their hopes, dreams, and their goals, and then use your technology to communicate it to them. But if, if you don't have someone, the number one thing you guys got to start doing is, is text video. You know, whether, whether it's realtors, text video. And Denise, I see you nodding. Are you doing a lot of text video right now? I do, yeah. I mean, it's for many different reasons, but yes, I, I do video often. So the, the, the video I'm going to showcase right now, and you're not going to be able to hear it because uh, I'm not going to play the video right now, but Josh Metal has a great video. I'll actually put a link to this down below. It's, it's a 30-second video. I mean, like, this is, this, this is the script. So, like, he talks to someone, 30-second video, and it's like, something that says I listened to you and I personally connected with you, something that tells them how to do the transaction. You know, he, they have a Fairway app, download the app. And then, and then after he gives them direction and he connects and he takes them through that experience, they get the total cost analysis. So it's like one, two, three, black belt way to take an app is talk to someone, connect with them, and then drive, you know, that digital experience. Any, any comments before we just get into pure marketing conversation? No, I mean, I, I, you know, what's funny is I didn't realize that video, I, I think to myself, why, why wouldn't more people do that? And yes, there's an extra step to it, but I recently saw, and I just throw this out there if anybody hadn't thought of this either, but um, the number one fear in the U S is public speaking and video is in a form of like public speaking. They associate the two. And so oftentimes the only thing that holds people back from doing it, they know that they should be doing it. They know that it makes you more personal, but it's just that fear and fear holds us back from so much. So, you know, it's one of the things I tell people, just challenge yourself where you don't have to jump two feet in, but just do maybe one video message a week. And eventually what will happen is you'll get better at it and good at it. And the beautiful thing is, is that real estate agents are no different. I mean, I'm working with the millennial a uh, real estate agent. She's 30 years old. She's beautiful. She looks great on camera and she shies away from doing video. And so it's, it's neat because now that you're comfortable with video, you can teach your real estate agent the same way and help them conquer that fear because video is just so much more powerful than text. No doubt about it. So guys, it is time to mastermind on marketing. So Denise is way beyond, you know, she's like three times over a black belt. And now like, how is she marketing? This is also time that if you guys have specific questions, I'm going to pay a little more attention to um, our Facebook group. Uh, what's up, Eddie? What's up, Catherine? Um, so if you do have questions through the one of us, put them down below. So, so let's talk about how you position yourself at the point of sale. Like, what do you say and I think everything you say is marketing, everything you say is branding, but what do you say at the point of sale for a new borrower to position yourself with them? What does that sound like? 
I tell everybody, and it's it's on my website, it's on my trifolds, it's when I talk to a client that my passion is helping clients build wealth through real estate. And the way that I do that is by getting really granular with strategies around their home loan. And I'll usually pause if I have them on the phone and I'll ask them, have you ever thought of your home loan as being strategic with your retirement planning? And I'm just quiet. And usually most of the time the answer is no. And so everything that I do, everything that I talk about, my value proposition, uh, my why, everything is my number one goal is to help people build wealth through real estate and through my mortgage planning strategies that I provide. Boom, guys. So listen to that. Play that back. Get your own value prop. And I, I would even push everybody on this call right now to like write it down. Like this is a generic one that's got a couple different ingredients into it. You know, it talks about building wealth faster by making smarter mortgage decisions. Talk about, hey, I am gonna, you know, when I close your deal, I just get started and I'm gonna be coaching you for life for the next 30 years. And I love that generationally to help you make smart mortgage decisions. And when the market changes, and I can help you achieve your goals faster. You're going to hear from me at least annually. And if something changes in between. So, you know, here is an example of how Denise positions herself. Um, the thing I liked about this, Denise, is not only is it a really good positioning statement, but you're, you're positioning yourself as the guide and not the hero. And I think so many loan officers, you know, like when they really, when you really read their marketing, it's, it's I'm a hero. It's not, I'm your guide to making this mortgage decision. Any comments on that? And, and by the way, anything you would do differently now that you've, you've heard the Don, Dan, Donald Miller um, interview, is there anything that you're going to do differently or any comments? Yeah. Yeah. So um, this was actually what you're, show, what you're showing here is an ad that I put in a magazine for one of my real estate agents. And so the end user target was a client. And so I do, you know, it's not often that you see an ad with an emoji and that was something, it's a passive emoji, but it's eye catching because that's what we're used to seeing in text. Uh, but of course the, the text that you read in there is all about helping people build financial wealth, which is very different than if you look at magazine ads with other loan officers, they're talking about the same value propositions that we've heard over and over. Um, the thing that I liked about Donald Miller's interview, and I actually wrote it, wrote it down, is he at one point said in there, getting a mortgage should not be confusing and it should not be hard. And so one of the things that I'm focusing on in 2020 is I'm looking at the driving forces behind why people want to buy a home and then what the fears are behind that. And it's different for each age group. You know, you can study that the first time home buyer age group and what those are. And so I'm getting really focused on the generations of those whys and those triggers. And I'm creating essentially marketing pieces that are all through social media uh, talking about those. So for example, one of the first time home buyers, they said that um, the main reason why, that there's three main reasons why they buy. And one of them is of course, to build wealth. And so recently what I've done is I've created true examples. We've done a bunch of refis in the last half of the year. Um, and most of them are people who purchased in the last year or two. And so what I've done is I've got accumulated data and I've said, okay, these people bought two years ago or last year. This is what the appraised value was. This is what their real life appraised value is today. And some people have gained $15,000 in a year, $20,000 in a year. We took somebody that did a grant loan from a 6.125 down to a 3.625, zero out of pocket, and their house appreciated in $15,000 $15, on like a $250,000 home. So I'm starting to get really focused on um, what I'm touching or what I'm promoting in my messages. And when I watched his video, this, are, this articulated the fears, I think, because people do think the mortgage process is confusing and that it's hard. And so it's not just about tackling the wealth that somebody can build, but it's also tackling those fears. And so then I saw, I think it was Josh's 
Like, here's the three ways that I help this process not be confusing. And so that's what I'm going to do a lot is spend more time on talking about how, you know, our process does, it, it is easy. We do lay everything out where all you have to do is follow our roadmap and we'll get you to the finish line. So I love that about what Donald Miller says about tackling things, you know, from that perspective. And then, and then, you know, one thing I've noticed over the years that you do is you just do a good job of, you know, doing a lot of the same things that other people do, but you do them better. They're always on brand. And then you're always telling stories, you know, and your story strategy. And so it's just like if, if I was a consumer following you, if I was a realtor following you, I'm always learning and I'm always kind of being entertained. So it's kind of like edutainment. Um, just follow you on social. Right. So I do want to, I do want to go through your, your, your kind of like online platform real quick. I want everybody to see, you know, this is, this is Denise's website. You notice that, you know, she's always got her brand, the mortgage nerd. Um, you know, she's positioned herself. It's consistent. Um, you know, if you want to know her story, like what's her, why, what does she do? How is she unique? It's easy. To, that's it's my, easy to find. That's my Simon Sinek right there. That's yep, my that's your how, Simon what, why. Mm -hmm. Yep, how, what, why. And, and do you have your how, what, and why? I would just say, if you if you really want to crush it, you want to build a personal brand, have a brand, know your how, what, and why, communicate that. And then you look at every channel, you know, she's got that picture that you saw in the magazine. It's on her profile on Facebook. You know, it's on her profile on Instagram. Uh, when you look at her total cost analysis, like her advice, it's, it's consistent guys. Um, you know, her YouTube channel, she's got the consistent picture. You know, we talked before the call, looks like we have an image that we might want to update there. Um, and, and Denise, Dang literally it. when we were, I know when we were prepping for this, she's like, Oh, you know, I had to update that. I haven't fixed it. And I guarantee you guys within a couple of days, you'll go to Denise's, you know, YouTube channel. And it's, you know, there, there's just this constant theme. If you're a consumer, if you're a realtor, you know her brand, you like her, you trust her, and she's always educating you. She's winning with advice. And what is that, guys? That is a challenger sales rep. You know, that's how you become super successful. So Denise, what, what else are you doing? Like, think of the little things that you're doing. What else are you doing to market and promote yourself as a, uh, you know, black belt mortgage advice. You know, what I've really made a shift this year is I realized I did a fairly decent job sharing this to my networks from like a Facebook and Instagram standpoint, but I wasn't really doing a good job sharing the feedback back to my real estate agents. And so it dawned on me at the beginning of the year that we have all this, all these success stories from different things of, helping a client get their FICO score from a 620 to a 680. And, and it's not just, you know, the numbers of 620 to 680, but what did that mean? How much better of a rate did that get them? How much money did that save them over 84 months? How much money did that save them on their PMI if it was a conventional loan? Um, and so it, it was really going a couple layers deeper, but also sharing this with real estate agents. And I think that there's, obviously an art to it. And actually Don M Miller talked about this in the interview of, I think he, I think he referenced that like go back into high school and imagine if you were the guy that talked about, did he say kiss all the girls? I can't remember what analogy. Was that the analogy he said? Well, he, well, you know yeah, well, he, he was using it just like the brag, the guy that brags about kissing all the girls. Right. He, he, he's a douche, right. you know, like don't, yeah. don't be yeah, that not, bragger. Yeah. Yeah, and so I, I think when I say there's an art into delivering the success stories is you don't want to be the guy that's like, oh, I just closed 75 million um, or I just helped 258 families year to date because that can be a little intimidating. And it can come across a little douchey. And so it's, it's articulating it in a way from passion and a way from excitement. And I genuinely mean it. And so it's delivering those success stories and in the manner of like, I saved this person money, or we had a strategy uh, on a deal that was going south and um, I won't get into it, but there was a lot of creativity we did around the appraisal 
and um, able to then get seller concessions back because of, uh, of our appraisal strategy. And we ended up getting that client to the finish line. And so now, not just sharing this on my Facebook and on my Instagram, but I have a sneaky little private group that is very exclusive. It's only, for, actually, I got this from Brian Bomar. Um, I only have it available for certain real estate agents. And it's for my, uh, it's, it's to be a VIP Nerd Club member. And so I'm starting to do more videos in there of those kinds of success stories, doing tips and marketing um, strategies, things, things that I do from Mortgage Coach Edge that can help that person get off the fence from buying versus selling or how to rebuttal that client that tells you that they're going to rent another year. I'm starting to post more in those private groups. And what I found throughout the year is that's been almost, I would say that has been more impactful. Not that I stopped doing it on my public account. But I'll tell you, making sure that having that private group and making sure that the people I want to see it, see it, I'm teaching them how to sell me. And I'm teaching them how to rebuttal all of those situations because, man, they don't, they don't know those words and they don't know those stats and they don't know those finances. We have to teach them that. But how often are we going to really be able to get in front of them and teach them all of that. Well, you, you use a platform like Facebook where you can have a group and they get notified as soon as you post in that group. And I do live videos all the time. After this call, I'm going to do a video to that group about um, a situation I just ran for a person yesterday and how it, it got them into buying a house when they were going to wait to save more money. It's like what is drastically going to happen in this person's life that they're going to be able to save an extra $5,000, just take the money from your 401k because you're taking money from one asset and putting it into another asset, and I'm going to show you what that's going to do. So it's, that has been the most impactful is sharing that, not just with a mass email that goes out maybe from your CRM because everybody gets emails, but I would say year to date, that's what's allowed me to capture more agents. And they've introduced me to other real estate agents. That's like, oh, Denise is the bomb. You've got to use her for everything. Love this. So guys, a couple things. One, if you have questions, post them. I'm going to look at it in a minute and bring questions in from the group. So post questions down below. Two, if you have a, you heard Denise's, how she positions herself. If you have yours written down and you can cut and paste it, share it down below. If you're watching the recording, guys, let's get better together. Let's inspire each other and help each other. So share your positioning statement. Denise, in just a minute, would you be cool almost like doing a dry run of that, like pulling up a TCA and giving us, how, how long do you think it will take just like in budget time? We've got like 13 minutes, like five minutes-ish. Yeah, it probably will be less than that. I'll just go over one one that I was working on this morning, if you want. Yeah, pull, pull up. So we're going to have Denise pull up a TCA and show us if, you know, she's going to create content, whether it's a story or it's a video or it's a live, you know, she's going to push a live event. Like right now, this particular call, we have it on Zoom, which, you know, we probably have 80 to 100 people on that. And then we also have it streaming live into our Facebook group. So no matter how people want to consume that content. And then we're going to take this, we're going to push it into our YouTube channel. So, so I do think that's a super smart move for all you mortgage coach members out there. There's no reason you couldn't be doing the same thing, you know, teaching, educating in a way that's inspirational, educational, authentic, is entertaining as you want to make it. Um, so check that out. Uh, let's see if I've got any quick questions and tell me when you're ready to show this. Um, I am ready. Do I have to do that? Do I do that on my end? Yeah, share, share the screen and I'll tell you when I see it. Where is, oh, share, I got you. And I'll tell you when I see it. Okay. Boom, we see it. Okay, so this so tell is us what we're looking at. And almost, almost walk us through it like we're realtors, you know, the okay. audience that you're going to do it for. Okay, um, so I'm actually going to record this. This was an example of what I was uh, helping a client with last night, but now I've set it up where I'm going to uh, post this. I'm going to do a live video on my private 
uh, realtor Facebook group. So the end user is not client that this is for. But I'm, all I'm wanting to showcase then is this particular client, their parents were in their ear, and they were adamant that if they were going to buy a house, they had to put a minimum of 10% down. And this person's dad told them that if they couldn't put 10% down, it almost didn't even make sense to buy that they should wait to buy until they could have at least 10, which is kind of crazy because normally we hear that 20% number, not 10. Um, well, the only way for them to put 10% down is if they were going to take money from an existing 401k, which we were exploring doing, but going back to teaching somebody something that they'll always remember, I said, I'll tell you what, let me look at some numbers tonight. Now that I know uh, where your funds for closing are coming from, we've got your current rate of return on your 401k account because they didn't know. I said, it's really important to me that I run the numbers. So as I'm talking to the real estate agents, I'll show them, here you've got the 10% down. I'm not honing in on rate and payment because that's not what this is about. This was purely about uh, the funds for closing and the opportunity cost of taking money from a 401k. So for this option, they'd have to bring close to 29628 For the 5% down option, they would only have to bring 16131 So that's a difference of, I think it was right around 13500 or 13500 that that is what they would ultimately end up withdrawing from their 401k and putting into withdrawing it and putting it down to their home. Well, so then I ran this net worth analysis and I said, okay, if in 15 years, what would your net worth look like if we take that money out of the 401k and we put it into the home? So you started your loan with 10% down, your net worth at the end of 15 years would be 360,000 versus the 402,000, and you can see that one of the main reasons why there's so much more net worth is because that money in the 401k is compounding and growing at a 5.4%. That was what the average was. So the assets position is 72,000 versus uh, the assets here, which is 22,000. And the reason why I'm showing this, there's a lot more that I would go into this from a client's perspective. The only reason why I think this is an important video for agents to learn is because how many times do real estate agents, especially with first-time home buyers, how many times do they run into clients where the parents know best? And sometimes, no offense to parents, but they just have an old-school mentality because they're not current with modern-day options and what it means. And so, um, they just get stuck into, you've got to at least put this amount of down. I mean, even my own mother-in-law, she'll tell you to this day, I think it's crazy that you can buy a house with just 5% down. And I'm like, well, it's crazier that rent prices are going. I don't argue with her because I have to be nice to her, but you get my drift. Um, but I show this to real estate agents because I want them to know, hey, we work with clients that have maybe difficult parents, and it's the mindset that that parent has. And the easiest way for me to shift mindset for somebody in that generation, especially because I'm not usually their age, is to financially show them the facts. And I move the conversation from an emotional conversation, which is quite frankly what it is. They feel like that's what's best. Don't touch the money from your 401k because they feel like that's not the right thing to do. Um, but if I can show them the numbers and I can show them, well, even if they bought this home with 5% down and they kept the money in their 401k, Mr. Client's crazy parent, this is what their net worth would look like. Now I can ease that anxiety because I'm financially showing them those numbers and we're moving the conversation from emotion to factual. And so what I'm selling to the real estate agent, if you will, is that we can work with difficult parents and we can work with parents that maybe have a mindset that us and the real estate agent know isn't the right mindset. But sometimes those agents don't know how to shift the mindset of those, of those parents because they don't have tools like this. So I want my client, I want my real estate agents to feel confident that no matter who we're talking to, when people know their numbers, we can shift that mindset and get a deal done. And I, I love this for all the reasons you said that, Hey, there's a lot of families that are just have, whether it's called broken, dated, or let's just call it uninformed mindsets, you know, we can help your client see the facts. And usually when they see the facts, it creates urgency. And then here's the deal. Right. Like, um, Eddie just posted something, need help creating urgency. 
So if you unpack the thoughts based off of their assumptions and it doesn't make sense, that's good. I'd rather have a quick no that, hey, based off what you think values are going to do, based on where rates are at, based on these facts, yeah, maybe now's not the time. That is good to go. Let's go get someone where based on the facts, based on the numbers, oh my God, this is more compelling than I thought. So I, I, love, I love this strategy. Uh, I also wanted to just, everybody noticed a couple things that took place. You notice she was using a highlighter. You know, that's part of being a purple belt, you know, using modern technology. You notice that she's gonna create a video. That's part of, you know, being a modern mortgage professional. Notice that the client wanted something and instead of just like trying to get them what they wanted and being a transaction driven fee worksheet loan officer, a little constructive tension, like, hey, I'm gonna listen to you. I know this isn't exactly what your, you know, parents are recommending, but let's put the numbers. She knew how to drive the constructive tension, you know, move towards the tension with leadership, clarity, and facts. Um, anything else on this, Denise, before we, uh, I'm going to pull up a few other things on my screen. Anything else on your side? No, just that if you look at that difference, it's like the alternative is, is if the client still it falls into that mindset. And you know what? Some of the mindsets might be broken up real estate agents. They might yeah. think the same thing that you should never take money out of a 401k to help with a purchase of a home. So this is also addressing some of the mindsets that my agents might have. But oftentimes what we see, even if this scenario was, I don't have any money for a down payment, but you've got money in your 401k and maybe I'm showing them a renting versus taking money out of your 401k for a 5% down or 3% down or whatever the case is to buy a home. The point is, is that let's say they decided to wait. That means that what in your saving habits, which we know the statistics of that nationwide, do you think is going to change where this person's going to be able to say $13,000, let's just call it 12 months. If I had to, I would take it a step further that said, okay, if you chose no, which they, I know that the client's not going to do, but then I'm going to show them, okay, so now you're going to have to save at least 13500 assuming that the cost of this house doesn't appreciate. Now how much money did you spend in rent over that time period versus having a mortgage where you've got the principal reduction and the you know, possibility of a 4% appreciation? And then we have no idea where rates are going to be you know, next year. So people, people use those words, but only the TCAs and the mortgage coach people – quantify what those words mean and when you quantify it it's a game changer i love that i love that so i'm going to share my screen real quick and then we're going to do some closing thoughts so so just a reminder to everyone you know get clear on how are you positioning yourself and i'm with denise don't position yourself as a the triangle of transaction fast loans low rates keep promises those are table stakes you know, position yourself as someone that's going to help make better decisions, reduce confusion, and build wealth. And and then, you know, I love this. This is one of my favorite interviews of um, 2019, where you really, you're creating amazing content on Facebook and Instagram, driving that rent versus own conversation, you know, helping bring buyers into the market, and then telling that story in multiple channels. You know, and it sounds like, you know, it's Facebook, it's Instagram, it's email, it's text, and then it's private Facebook groups. Anything else you would add to this strategy that you're doing differently since we, we did this last interview? No, just that I don't do enough video, which probably sounds crazy, but in the last couple of months, we've just been so slammed. And so I haven't even been doing enough video, but I would do a video every single day. And there's ways to, um, you know, it's like what you and I were talking about. You can do a live Facebook and Instagram uh, video, save it, and you can still upload it to your YouTube channel. It may not, ha it may not be the widescreen, and it may have those black bars. And so some of us are like, eh, I don't like the way it looks, but I promise it's better to get the content up there than worry about what it looks. So um, there's ways to streamline it where you're not doing 10 different videos on 10 different platforms to get a message out there. Yeah, no doubt. So 
So guys, just a couple of reviews and then I'm gonna check for questions. Um, this, is, this interview is available on our YouTube channel. You can share it with your team or other loan officers there. It will be on Facebook Live in our Facebook group. So you can actually see it happening live right here right now. Uh, I do wanna shine a light on a podcast I did with Todd Duncan two weeks ago. Uh, I mean, first of all, it's a great conversation. It just reminded me what a masterful interviewer Todd is. Uh, you know, it's, it's a really good conversation. Uh, we both spoke on stage for a, few, for a mutual client a few weeks ago. And after that, we just went back and forth for, I don't know, 30 minutes. And, and I think it's a great conversation. I'm seriously considering to do a podcast in 2020. If you think that I should, um, PM me or comment down below. I'm going to kind of gauge the amount of feedback I get from the mortgage coach community on, do I make this a Q1? I've got to do it now, or do I do it sometime next year? So let me know your thoughts on that. Um, can't emphasize enough how important it is that you become a black belt in mortgage advice. And I've given you the roadmap, listen to the recording, and then be a great marketer. You know, like do what Denise is doing. Make sure that all your channels, website, Facebook, Instagram, total cost analysis, they're telling a consistent story. And so I, we posted a new brown belt marketing excellence um, playlist. This particular interview will go into that. I think we'll have about five interviews in there. So if you really wanna, even if you're a black belt or a grandmaster, you might wanna go back and just work on your marketing. Uh, this is an interview I did. I really dig this interview. Andy Parson in the New England market, um, you know, he's killing it. Did like 26 loans last month. He did a really nice job because he's in a market where it's traditionally in-person meetings. And he talked about, hey, when I can't do an in-person meeting, this is how I do it. And he killed it. So, so check that out. Um, Denise, any last thoughts from you before I look for some questions from our audience? No, just that you're, I mean, the Facebook page and the YouTube page, there's oftentimes, no matter what belt you are, I've learned from people in almost any belt, you know, so it's, I often find myself, if I feel like I'm getting in a rut or if I feel like I don't know how to do something, that's what I love about this network is it's so tactical that I know I can jump on the Facebook page or the YouTube and learn something and put it into place. I shared with Dave earlier that the video that he did with Wally about the anniversary email is something I committed to in 2019. And I did one recently for a top executive at a massive company. He was a marketing executive. He didn't really, he, I think in the initial email, he said, I'm not planning on selling or, any, or refinancing, but sure, what the heck, if you want to, I responded with what my analysis looks like. And then when his response back to me was like, wow, I'm blown away the commitment that you have for your clients. And, and so anyway, that is a practice that I would not have put into play if I did not hear that video that you and Wally did. And I listened to that video because last fall, my business was down and um, I thought to myself, okay, I need to start putting good fuel into my brain, learning from masters like the Wally's and Dan Keller's and Jeremy's and that look what it's done for me this year. So um, it's something we commit to. I put it in my CRM. We do an annual asset review for every single client. And we've got a lot of clients. So if, my point is, is you can learn from anybody. It's just if you get committed to it. So if, you're in, if you find yourself in that situation, pop on the Facebook group and the YouTube page because um, you'll get one nugget that could generate a, a lot of families being helped more than what they were. I love that. And think about it like this, guys. It's Netflix for mortgage professionals. Only you you make money when you watch Mortgage Coach. So uh, Eddie just posted a question, and maybe you could just give us a minute scripting on this. How do you position yourself as a guide to realtor partners? Like, what's that sound like? I find it's most easiest if you have the repetition of those of the story selling, like what we've been talking about. So, you know, when you meet with a real estate agent, it might be for an hour, you're doing coffee or you're having lunch. It's, it's somewhat difficult. I can tell them my value proposition and I can share a story with them, but I may not see them again from another month or two months, depending how busy the agent is. So the private Facebook group of being able to story sell 
the different situations, how I've been able to help with guiding and having a financial impact. I, I share that story on that page specifically to let them see firsthand this is how I'm a guide, not just a loan officer. So I firmly believe in story selling. I love it. And a couple reminders to all you guys. You're looking at our Facebook group right now. And, and if you've not watched the three videos I'm going to show you at least once, maybe a couple times, uh, Daniel Miller, good reminder. You know, Jeremy Forcier in this particular one right here, not only does he give you five great questions to ask, he gives you the scripting as to how he positions mortgage coach with his realtors. And then this conversation with Shayla Gifford, um, right now, I think it, it, it's, I don't think it's the most viewed in terms of number of views, but it's certainly um, got the most hours. Like people are watching this entire video. And, and so, do, have you seen this one, by the way, Denise? The Shayla Gifford interview? No, I have not. So, so do you know who she is? No. Oh, so she was- Don't tell her I that. Think, yeah, don't, don't worry about it. She, she was, uh, I think she was the number one producer at Guild. I think she's the number, was the number one producer at all of the core. And then, and then she's just a great leader, you know? And so she's a, you know, rock star producer and, you know, she just, her and her team just started using Mortgage Coast this year. Anyways, really? I, I guarantee wow. you will, you will dig this interview. So guys, and then of is? course, uh, she's the market leader in, in, uh, in um, Reno, Reno, okay. California. Yeah. Like the market share leader in that. And then of course, guys, Denise Donahue right here, check it out. Um, so we are one minute past. I hope you guys got a lot of value. If you got value, give us a like. If you loved it, love it, share it. Uh, I asked for a couple different comments throughout the conversation. Please comment below. And uh, Denise, appreciate you. Thank you. Have an awesome day and uh, talk soon. Oh, Denise, could you forward a link to that TCA if you people ask for it? And yes. we'll put it in comments down below. It's an actual client link, so it could possibly change because that's an active client. But yes, I will send it to you. Okay, thanks. Really appreciate it. Take care. Ciao.